Hi cutie, we're back in my sewing room, also known as my bedroom, living room, and tea room, and doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm really excited about today's tutorial because I finally get to show you how I downsize my jeans as seamless as possible. I'm a September Virgo. I do pay too much attention to details, so no shade to other YouTubers that have done tutorials in the past, but it's really... It really bothers me when I see that people just take the sides of the jeans and they simply overlap them. And that way this original seam line gets lost and it just looks weird and unprofessional. And so yeah, that method doesn't work for me. I mean, the before and the after are pretty different. <laughs> I want to take them from the sides and also from the insides. I'm going to undo all the side seams and the inner seams here. <laughs> but before that, probably I should measure how much <laughs> I need to take in because, yeah. So, taking your centimeter, grab <laughs> your jeans. It would be easier if someone helped you pin, measure and write down the excess amount that needs to be removed. So I will have to undo the inner tie stitches and the outer stitches. Also remove the stitches from the waistband and from the belt loops. I'm going to go grab a coffee with my mom and undo the stitches in the meantime and I will be back. And we're back, the crotch measurement. You're going to take half of the crotch excess from the front leg and half from the back leg. So just mark half on the front leg now. Because this was folded and it would have been so bulky, they obviously trimmed the inside of the French seam, which I should also do. In order to remove the bulk at the crotch, you need to open up the French seams and cut two out of the four layers of fabric that there are. As you can see now, it's easier for it to lay flat. So I'm trying to take these three centimeters from the crotch and I'm folding the material inside itself. And eventually I want it to blend into the original seam. Simply clip the crotch and the ending. That way the fabric will guide you on how it wants to naturally fold. I know there's probably seamstresses out there that are swearing at me <laughs> for teaching you guys this, but it works. If it's dumb and it works, it's not dumb. What do we call this S curve? I'm leaving the back curve intact and then I'm just... The left side is intact and the right side is stretched out. I'm going to have to measure from the crotch to the side seam to determine if, if it's sort of equal. 23 and a half. Sort of 23 and a half. <laughs> okay, let's see. If it is at equal, I will just undo it and measure it properly. As for the sides... One inch. I want to keep the tiny pocket, so since my one inch mark is overlapping the tiny pocket, I will just take them in exactly two centimeters instead of one inch. But that won't be such a huge problem because it was going to be a huge problem. <laughs> Here's my actual hack for taking in your jeans in a seamless way. If you're keeping this original side seam and simply overlap it however much you want to take them in, it will seem like you haven't taken them in. I'm sure that I'm not going to break a needle into this point. And I'm just going to pin them. If you pull at the material, it will straighten and show exactly how it needs to fall. Later on when I'm redoing the side seams, there's a better explanation. Hold on. <laughs> I'm using the original seam as a guide for how much I took them in. 
and here I'm copying the measurements for the other side. If I just overlap them, they will be equal because, again, pulling at the fabric, it will just lay naturally. Don't worry, baby, the better explanation comes somewhere around the 10 minute mark, I swear. Top stitch here on the sides. And you might want to be real careful where you have this thing. You see it? Best if you go slow around it because it could break your needle and. I forgot about one part. Since I'm bending this inside, I need to undo this stitch because otherwise it won't lay flat. Top stitch the overlapment <laughs> all the way down to the point where you meet the original side seam. This will ensure that the seams will lay flat when I'm going to overlap them with the back side. Trust the process. What I'm doing is I'm pinning the crotch. Only take in from below the original crotch, trust me. However small your booty, you still need room for it. And as you already took in from the front, just take from below the As you can see, here is where I top stitched. And here is where I put it on top. So yeah, <laughs> let's see how it goes. So sorry for my arm taking most of the screen. I was basically top stitching the front side to the back side where I marked, where I pinned. I was doing my best trying to only sew the inner thigh seam by pushing it under the foot of my machine while simultaneously lifting the leg from the back so that it doesn't get sewn. Which I of course did. <laughs> yes, I am a pro at seam ripping apparently. Second time was a charm. <laughs> Let's try and replicate the same measurements onto the other leg. Align the seams of the back of the legs and mark where you've sewn on the already sewn side. <laughs> with the back and pin where you've marked so that it lays on top of the mark. Since I already took the crotch in the front 3 cm, the back crotch is intact and I'm just overlapping it where it used to be before and remember we're just taking the fabric from beneath the French seam on the back side, not the crotch itself. You need space for your booty, however small, <laughs> trust me. After pinning just the marked points, if you stretch out the pants, they will show you exactly where they need to lay in order to blend with the original side seam. And that, cuties, is how you wing it in life. <laughs> Top stitch again the inner tie seam and try only to fit the inner tie seam underneath the machine's foot while lifting the back of the leg so that it doesn't get sewn. Let's do a try on. Hi baby, we're back. I'm back, I mean, I don't know if you are back. <laughs> so yeah, um, after trying them on, I realized that they're still too baggy on the crotch area. So remember when I was trying to... Oh no, it's the original tag with the date. I will have to sew it back, but I need to look where it was supposed to be. So as I was saying, they were still too baggy in the crotch area. And so my attempt to salvage this the small change pocket failed. I will have to actually take them in a bit more, which means that half of the change pocket will be covered by the back side. Which doesn't really bother me, but it would have been nicer if I were able to keep it. But yeah. That's life. So I'm going to pin again the sides, but first I am pinning down the pockets so that when I'm sewing this doesn't move. Do 
doing the same on the other side. So you're just going to straighten the, in the pocket, arrange it so that it lays nice and flat, and pin it down so that it doesn't move while you're sewing. I'm transferring the actual markings that I took yesterday onto the jeans, carefully avoiding the metal pin. cut this bit out because otherwise my machine won't go over it. The foot is standing pretty low on the machine and I carefully cut out the inner part of the French seam so that it lays flatter as I was going to overlap the back side to the front pocket so yeah. As you can see now it's a bit of continuity I aligned the back French seam with the front pocket and pinned the markings all the way down. Same as with the inner tie just overlap the back side on top of the front side and pin it down because we are going to top stitch the sides. Same as before measure from the pin to the original side seam and transfer the measurements onto the other pant leg. To ensure that the legs are equal, pay attention to details. For example, if you took one inch just above the big pocket on the left leg, make sure you take one inch just above the pocket on the right leg. Or try and measure from the waistband down. Say it's 10 inches below the waistband and you took it 3 inches. On the other leg, mark 10 inches below the waistband and take them in 3 inches. Yes, I'm being serious. the inner part of the French seam on the other side as well. Same as before, overlapping and pinning the back to the front. So find your markings and overlap the fabric and make sure that it's stretched out so that it doesn't crease. You will see what I mean in 3, 2, 1. And now it's time to top stitch them again and for the last time, I promise. <laughs> Let's get to sewing. Sorry, that was a bit up close. <laughs> Hope I didn't make you uncomfortable. Let's try them on. <laughs> the pocket but it's just a bit shorter but this is the side we just have to sew the waistband up obviously but they're fitting way better if I do say so myself now let's sew back the waistband so what you know where we overlapped the denim right I'm just folding it over and catching it under making sure both sides are tucked in. Just tuck in the waist of the pants underneath the waistband and pin away. <laughs> Only pin all the way to the belt loop in the front. Disregard for now the excess amount of fabric. I'm sewing from the back all the way to the first tie thing for the belt, belt loop. So I'm sewing from the back all the way to the belt loop. Please let my hyperactive self know if fastening the footage bothers you. Pinning and sewing the other side as well now. Instead of cutting the waistband, we're creating a dart directly underneath of the belt loop to mask it. Gather the excess waistband parallel to the belt loop and mark it. Continue sewing the waistband normally until you meet the belt loop. Start from the opposite direction now, holding down the gather and sewing over it until you meet the rest of the waistband. Ugly, but it's getting hidden under the belt loop, so no worries. How many times did I say overlap? Overlap the waistband. <laughs> Secure the dart with a straight stitch. Keeping the needle pin to the fabric, lift up the foot and turn around the fabric to sew 
the opposite direction for a stronger stitch. So back the belt loop to mask the ugly. I'm shortening the waistband on the other part as well. 